Ishkam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, in today's episode of RF Beginnings and Always, we are going to be continuing with Baxter's romance route. And today we are going to be doing the moment mountain. So, yeah, before we get started, make sure to subscribe and, and share this video with your friends so they can find out about my amazing channel just like you have right now. So, yeah, let's get into I hope you enjoy. Period, let's go. No two summer evenings and sunset bird look quite the same. Oh wait, hold on. This music's loud. All right, not downtown, not the beaches, and not on a street, where the only change that anyone had seen in years was the arrival of a new tourist. Though you hadn't seen any stars in the sky, you knew the day was almost over from the sound of chirping crickets. Shadows of swaying branches were stretching across the grass. Well, probably. You hadn't gotten the chance to experience the sunset before you got pulled into whatever, whatever this was while trying to clarify your plans for tomorrow with Baxter. He paced back and forth between a pair of half-packed or half-unpacked, depending on how someone saw it, suitcases. Piles of folded clothes were abandoned on the bed. Um... You help pick up a few of the things Baxter left lying around the floor. He insisted that he'd clean up after himself, but he didn't want to be idle, and Baxter wasn't about to turn away a helping hand, least of all yours. This wasn't the first time that you'd been in the condo. Baxter invited you over before, but so far it had only been the first floor. You were in the master bedroom now. As a kid, the condo was the equivalent of Fort Knox. No way in, and if someone wanted to sneak inside, there was probably no way out. It just wasn't worth the, the risk. Being in that room was closer to a fantasy than it was reality, as much as someone could dream about being in a rental bedroom anyway. And yet, here you were, all thanks to Baxter, who didn't seem to realize the gravity of the situation. One of the doors to the air air his word for it was ajar. Oh, is that Spanish? <sighs> I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hangers rattled from the excessive force Baxter was used to remove a few of his jackets. Honestly, you weren't sure why he packed them at all. It never got cold enough anywhere in Southern California to wear outerwear during the winter. Never mind the summer. Because he's from Oregon and it's cold. <laughs> And yet, he still brought them, no matter how much he was convinced otherwise. So. It will be cooler in temperature, but just barely. While we won't be seeing any snow, I should, or I would suggest you should, I would suggest you bring a jacket and a sturdy pair of shoes. He pulled another zipper in one suitcase, peering into its contents, but not deeply investigating for long before he moved on to the next thing. A drawer filled with nothing that he abruptly shut. He wadded past the only part of his wardrobe that remained neat and in place, formal clothes. A full suit was perfectly arranged for use at any minute in case there was a regal emergency you had to guess. Baxter hesitated before leaving that bee. His fingers grazed the top of the comforter as he passed. He wove through an increasingly intricate disaster area to look for something else that he hadn't made clear to you. It seemed that up until now, Baxter had been living out of his suitcases, which wouldn't ordinarily strike you as a problem until he said he needed at least one of them to be empty. If, if only so that he could relocate his things from one to the other. He was certain that he'd need no more than an afternoon to pack before you arrived. But there were some things in the world that not even likes a Baxter ward, ward could handle with grace and composure. I must apologize. <laughs> he stopped in place, the corners of his eyes softened as he turned to you, brows knit together even as he busied his hands with folding a pair of pants only to immediately throw it into the suitcase. I realize this can't be terribly entertaining. I'm okay. Okay, this music is getting on my nerves. It wasn't really a bother. You'd come of your own volition and knew what he'd be doing while you were here. Besides, if there was trouble, you'd have gone home. He was a warrior. That is one of your charm points. In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> he chuckled, shaking his head with quiet amusement. Content with your reply, he went back to unconsciously constructing a labyrinth of his possessions. You wondered how he fit everything into two suitcases to begin with. This entire situation made 
about as much sense as anything else around him, which was to say that maybe a quarter of it followed any linear train of thought. The rest left much to be desired. Baxter had a tendency to work through things in a sort of cir circuitous sense. Circuitous sense. I don't know how to say that word. His own logic that he used to explain things as a matter of fact. So much so that you couldn't help but just take him on his word, even if the details only made themselves clearer later. What was happening now was even more convoluted than normal. The first point, Baxter very suddenly announced that he was going on a vacation away from his vacation. A three-day and a two-night joint to a mountain lodge a handful of hours away by his judgment. Plans were already underway as soon as he figured out where he was staying in California. It made sense if he was trying to get more bang for his buck for his experience in the area, but that wasn't the main reason. The second point, it was a family tradition happening without his family. He and his parents always went to the Rockies in the summer, except this time he was staying in California. Baxter decided to make a trip out to the mountains here regardless. And that was also fine, except he wasn't prepared for the trip at all. You would have thought that someone else planned when and where it happened with the way he was rushing around the condo trying to pack and trying to remember what to pack. And point three, the most particular, peculiar, uh, he rented a second room in the lodge despite coming here alone and to visit no one in particular. Adiochusly, after explaining the situation, he asked you to take up the free room without missing a beat. You, a person who dated him for all of half of a second. A couple's trip was the kind of thing that was more appropriate for months down the line. Something to cement a relationship as steady. But apparently being together at all was plenty enough for Baxter. Oh, this is so sweet. The weekend was free and your moms were able to accept the idea of you going. Going up to the mountains to stay in a lodge was a cool opportunity. It wasn't the kind of trip you and your family took. Not that you'd taken many trips since your breaks got busier and Liz moved away. So the prospect of traveling anywhere farther than the city was exciting. Negotiating with your moms went better than expected. They hadn't vetoed it immediately because you were an adult, but they weren't excited about the idea. It was one thing if you were going on a trip with the usual cast of suspects, but Baxter, a guy you met basically the other day? He was polite and well-spoken. However, your moms didn't know his parents, a rule that you thought uh, was absolute once you were in high school, but not so when it came to overnight trips. They eventually gave their blessing and Liz took your side in the discussion. She was convinced by the fact that you'd be staying in an entirely separate room to him. Um... <laughs> um, so let me guess, there was a buy one, get one deal on hotel rooms. A good guess, but no, there was no such deal. I requested it to be the case. Baxter's hands stalled over the suitcase he was bringing on the trip. He brushed back his hair into place, turning to his side to search for another misplaced necessity. I thought there was a possibility I might make friends during my stay here. There was no guarantee, of course. I wouldn't hope to make any presumptions there. His gaze wandered, lips tightening at the corners of his mouth involuntarily. His com- Sorry, that was my Alexa. His complative expression faltered as he looked up from his suitcase to you. But I thought that if I did, then the trip would not be made exceptionally better with company. If not, then so be it. Acquiring a room is the difficult part. A reservation needs to be made weeks in advance, whereas canceling one only needs a notice of 48 hours of no or more. It's taken off the bill, no questions asked. Realistically, I would only need two days to know if I was gonna, if I was going alone or with company. See? That was the case with you, was it not? Oh my god. You're so over the top, you know that, you chuckled. Me? Perish the thought. Perish the thought. He snickered under his breath, con continuing to search through his bag for treasure. Baxter went back to packing, though his suitcases looked to be meddling in quantities more now than they'd been earlier in the evening. Ah. He glanced over his shoulder at you, a black shirt folded in his hands as neatly as any store display you'd seen in your life. This might not be an ideal time to ask, but as we are speaking about the trip, I did want to ask as to where your personal boundaries lie, Brittany. I am deeply appreciative of your mother's approval, but I am comfortable with may not mirror what Oh, but what, but what I'm comfortable with may not mirror what they are comfortable with. You only need to say so if you're in agreement with their preferences, but if not... 
Oh god. Baxter had a tendency to act a lot older than he actually was. It was times like this when he smirked entirely too mischievously that you were reminded that he was barely any older than you. I may forget by the time we get there. You chuckle to yourself. Yeah, of course he added the caveat. Covid, Kevit. Moms were hoping Liz could come along too, so I wouldn't be alone. He didn't look surprised by the suggestion. Apparently, where Houghton must have and certainly did come off to your parents to invite their youngest on an overnight trip. But she argued I wasn't going out of state, and I'm still not a kid. I just have to call Liz every day. I mean, call. She won't let me get away with just texting. If I don't, she said she'll call the hotel instead and the police and anyone with a phone number to report that Peefy Love Pew was on the loose. <laughs> what? <laughs> Baxter snorted, not laugh, full on snorted. He covered his mouth, quickly avoiding your gaze as he had to resist the urge to laugh harder. You didn't know whether he'd seen the original cartoons or one of the more recent uses of the character, but he definitely got the reference. I was prepared to give your sister my pa my thanks for convincing your mothers, but it appears everyone has notes on my manner of dress these days. Yeah, mom joked that those old-fashioned black and white striped jumpsuits inmates wore what would match your hair, you know, if Liz did call the police on you. How clever. Is a black and white tie out of vogue, Brittany? You aren't wearing a tie. Trying to suppress the grin was nigh impossible. Especially after relieving the conversation about his vague resemblance to an aggressively forward skunk and a criminal. Baxter chuckled as he put away another pair of pants, the number of which you'd lost long lost count as of he of as he went back and forth. Charming. Your family is quite charming, and I do agree that that is only fair. Try to keep in touch with them while you're away. I'll trust you care for my fate <laughs> enough to do that much. Are you going to keep in touch with your parents? Mm, it is my intention. It is my intention, though I couldn't, couldn't promise it would be every day. The initiary for the trip was straightforward enough that Baxter didn't need to look at his laptop to read the details. He kept to his work on the suitcases. Check-in wasn't until 4 p.m. at the earliest, and the drive wasn't so significant that you'd be going for as long as you feared. So the plan was to leave at noon, find dinner somewhere in the area when you got there, and then check into the lodge in the evening. The first day would be getting there. The second would be exploring the area in earnest, and the third would be taking the morning easy before checking out at noon to head back home. While home for you, vacation home for Baxter. It was perfectly reasonable according to him. Upon further inspection of Baxter's own supplies, there were a few things left to pack and a few more things you needed to buy. I don't suppose we'll really need any formal... I don't suppose we'll need any form formal wear, really. Uh, but on the off chance that we have dinner at a restaurant that necessitated that. I think it'll be okay with that. But I'll see you tomorrow, Baxter. I got a pack, too. Good luck. As you started to make your way out of the master bedroom, he his head snapped up. Jeez. Of course. I will see you tomorrow, Brittany. Have a good evening. <laughs> Morning came uneventfully. Save the final warning from your family about how they deploy a full-fledged investigation team the minute that seems something off. You agree that you would call daily, but it didn't do much to dissuade the endless worrying. Liz didn't pull any punches either, least of all after your family helped you load your things into the back of Baxter's car. Ma and Liz pulled you into a hug as Mom shut the trunk with a click of finality before she joined in the squeeze. Don't forget that I'm watching him, Brittany. <laughs> I'll come get you if you need me to. Just say the word. Doesn't matter when, okay? You embraced the hug as they all tugged you in close. Ma and Mom planted a kiss each on your cheeks. They were rem they were just reminding you because they cared, not because they didn't trust you. But you wouldn't be going anywhere if they didn't let you go. Liz grinned, pulling you into another hug anyway. She squeezed your shoulders. Cool. Right, I trust Brittany to do her job, but Baxter... You'll be careful with that child, won't you? You couldn't see what their faces looked like because of the way that they held you. However, you could hear the apprehension in Baxter's tense laugh. I can do that. Of course, you have my word, ma'ams. A perfectly gentlemanly response from him as always. As you were freed, Baxter made his way to the passenger side. He opened the door for you with a sweep of his arm. Bye. Moms and Liz waved you off and you slid inside the car, shutting the door behind you. 
As soon as the seatbelts clicked, the engine roared to life. You reversed out of the driveway and rumbled away from your neighborhood to the freeway. The familiar sight of Sunset Bird eventually gave way to Prison Vista City, then to the open space between here and there. You couldn't smell the salt in the air anymore, and for a moment, it felt odd to remember that there weren't any beaches everywhere that you went, even in the same state. The radio set to classical music gave a nice backtrack to Baxter's storytelling of other trips he'd taken with his parents up to the Rocky Mountains. Those memories gave an idea of what to expect when you arrived at the cabin, even though he'd glazed over some of the details, he even mentioned otter experiences, one of which included getting chased across a river by what he and his family thought was a bear, but turned out to be a particularly chubby dog who wanted to be friends. <laughs> The ride was as smooth as it could be, except for the occasional congestion of traffic. That was always inevit inevitable this time of year. Baxter was in the only terrace. Taurus. Terrace. <gasps> I am so sorry. Taurus, not terrace. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Eventually, the massive freeways came down to two lanes as the elevation grew steeper and steeper. Roads cut through canyons, giving a scenic view. You still texted your friends and family between conversations and sightseeing until you lost signal. By the time you hit your first official checkpoint, it was late in the day. You stopped at a roadside din diner for a bite to eat before finishing the last leg of the trip. You offered a drive, but Baxter waved it off. It was already enough that you came after all. Making conversation with you also made it less of a dull task, so he didn't mind. And maybe it was better that way. Since Baxter was running it, if anything did happen, it'd complicate matters if he wasn't driving. After the short final stretch, the car rolled to a stop at the front of a massive log hotel. It towered over your head when you stepped out of the vehicle. Baxter handed the keys to the attending valet. The lodge was somehow both rustic and fancy at the same time. For an oversized wooden cabin, the doors had big elaborate wrought handles that you were sure must have cost a pretty penny. It appears that we have arrived. Backs around his side of the car with bags in hand, smiling comfortably, comfortingly, uh, as you stood there empty-handed and staring at the building. How snazzy. You didn't expect Baxter to laugh at what you said. It was a pretty apt description of the place, but he shook his head demurely. Lovely. I wasn't aware anyone still used that word. Amazing. You both carried your things into the lobby. You hadn't brought enough with you that you'd need to make a second trip. And after all that consternation in his bedroom baxter managed to had managed to shave everything he needed down to one bag and a suitcase the lobby was as big as the front of the building suggestion light piano music tinkled in the background an untraditional chandelier hung from the ceiling sunlight shining through the glass doors and reflecting on the carefully cut stonework a fireplace burned in the far end of the lobby for whom you could only presume to be guests, but despite all the chairs and couches available for them, there was scarcely a soul. It wasn't cozy, not in the way that you'd expected it to be, given Baxter only described it as a mountain lodge. It was big and impressive, and even the stairwell seemed more fitting for a medieval castle than a homey cabin in the woods. To one side, the front desk was occupied by staff who were busy with helping with a large party. Hmm, we may be waiting a while. Why don't we set these down? He tugged at the strap of the crossbody bag he had over his shoulder and lifted the suitcase in his hand, gesturing for you to follow to the nearest open seating area, which was all of them. Baxter, I mean, oh my god, footsteps echoed in the caver, cavernous room, and when your bag hit the ground, the sound of that did too. Um... Baxter opted to set his bags in one of the chairs instead of sitting. He'd been stuck in the car for so long. He didn't make a point stretching his legs, though, ostensibly because it would have looked overly casual for a man such as him. So now that you've been giving a look, what is your opinion on our temporary abode? Um, it's nice. I'm glad that our accommodations have sealed your approval. He turned his head to the front desk, though, though the situation hadn't improved at all. There was no signs of it clearing up now or in the near future. Brittany, would you mind if I made a phone call? I'm considering making the ob obligatory phone call to my mother. I do not often keep my 
parents appraised of my day-to-day -day life, but I do believe they will be glad to know I arrived at a secondary vacation. His gaze dropped to the floor as his hand idly sneaked into his pocket to fish out his phone. His formerly polite smile became crooked. I am not... I am not so bad a son that I cannot grant them that. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. It won't be more than a few minutes. Uh, and I'll have a chance to finally mention the lovely individual accompanying me. His teasing wasn't something to be missed, but it warmed your heart to know that Baxter considered your relationship meaningful enough to mention, even in passing to his parents. Officially withdrawing his phone, Baxter promptly brought up his contacts and made the call. A hand rested on his hip while the other held the, the device to his ear. His head craned back toward the high ceiling as he awaited the dial to him before a voice, too soft for you to hear but loud enough for you to register, greeted Baxter. Hello, mother. It's nice to speak with you. We've arrived at the hotel. The drive went well. He glanced over his shoulder at you before lightly pressing his index finger to his lips, as if to hush you before you could think of saying anything. You couldn't help but wonder if she caught on to the we, considering Baxter came to the stalo in the first place. Ah, yes, I have Brittany with me, my neighbor here. Of course, that is the greatest understatement of our relationship. She's quite special. Tell your mom I said hi. His soft brown eyes lit up with a new warmth, having not expected you to take interest. Brittany says hello, mother. He nodded as she said something in response to him. However, his attention didn't move from you. As the conversation continued on her end, he lightly covered his phone with his hand. She says hello to Brittany. Aww. He smirked while his mother continued on in silence. You weren't honestly sure that he was listening enough to have caught what she said. This was the closest appro approximation that you'd ever gotten to the vague concept that this that was Baxter's parents, and it was such a small thing, watching as he spoke to one of them over the phone. It felt so radically different than it did with your other friends. You knew Kira and Mr. Holden just like you knew Derek, Randy, and Terry's parents. All you learned about Baxter's parents, other than they existed, was that they didn't mind sending Baxter off to Sunset Bird for the summer. They wouldn't see him this season, and so you wouldn't see them. You had to wonder if Sunday you'd get the chance to meet them or speak to them directly. It didn't seem like a priority for Baxter. You were only dating for a little while, though, so maybe it was enough just to let them know you that you existed in the first place. After another few hums and yeses, Baxter's attention shifted to the front desk, which was slowly being vacated by the previous group. Ah, oh, mother, this was lovely, but I do have to take my leave. Take oh, care. Yes. Mm-hmm, me too. And with only a brief goodbye, he hung up and pocketed his phone. He turned to you, picking up his bag and suitcase. Shall we go and check in? Yeah. You trailed after him with your own luggage. The hotel receptionist smiled from behind a wide counter. Her eyes somewhat wary from the day's work. Good evening. The receptionist nodded, offering her own greeting and supply before asking if you were both checking in. Exactly, and I would appreciate your assistance in doing so. The reservation should be for two rooms under Baxter Ward. Ward. Why am I saying ward? Ward. <laughs> Handing over his driver's license and credit card. The receptionist made quick work of their computer system and slid two pairs of plastic cards through a machine. You were going to be in room... 194 and Baxter was going to have the room next to you 193 she picked up a map and drew a few arrows and lines you were directed to a left and head up to the or head up the elevator and take the stairs to the second floor with keys and map handed off you and Baxter depart from the front desk so did you want to take the elevator or the stairs um you realize Baxter didn't immediately follow. You turned back to him as he caught up, gesturing for you to wait. He dug out one of its key cards and offered it to you. Yeah. Elevator, here. It may not be necessary, but I would be happy to let you have it in case. Sure, thanks. I'll take it. Do you want to have one of my cards, too? Baxter gratefully took your card in hand, pleased to have your good faith in the matter. The executive decision was made to take the elevator up to the next floor, given all the bags. Truthfully, with only a night's worth of clothes and supplies, they weren't that heavy. What was more, it was only a floor up, but they'd installed an elevator for a reason, hadn't they? It'd be a shame not to put their hard work to use. The halls at the hotel were wide. It was easy enough for two people to pass through beside each other, though you and Baxter had to sidestep to make room for others occasionally. 
As you approached the end of the path with where your rooms sat beside one another, Baxter withdrew his keycard and held it against the digital lock with a fluid practice motion. Would it be alright if we were to meet later this evening? It was a long drive, and I, at least, am no rush to hurry off to the next activity. You waved your hand to dispel any concerns, both real and imagined. Sure, that's fine. I'll see you soon. Excellent. Take care, neighbor. <laughs> he winked, laughing as he disappeared inside of his room and shut the door with a click. Tapping your card against the lock, he followed suit. In comparison to the hotel foyer, the room was cozier, not by much, but it was much less grand in scale. One wall was laid precisely with wooden planks at the center of the room. The headboard of the single king-sized bed was situated by some nondescript painting. It didn't seem cramped, but in part because of the glass doors that led out onto a balcony, and because of the nearby windows which meant more light came into the room, it was bright even without the lamps on. In the breeze of the quiet evening up in the mountains, the branches waved to say hello. Setting down your stuff, you started unpacking toiletries and clothes before searching for a plug at the nightstand for your phone charger. As you unpacked and the sun really slipped further out of the room, it occurred to you that you also, owed a, you also owed a call to your loved ones. A promise was a promise. You meant to call her earlier when you were checking in, but it slipped your mind in between everything. Liz was still waiting. It didn't take more than a couple clicks through contacts to pull up Liz's number. She'd been one of the last people you were texting on your way up before the signal cut out in the first place. The phone rang for a second before your sister's voice came through the other line. There was an exaggeration to her tone, a sense of suspicion. So? Brittany, this better be you and not some impersonator. I'm on to you, Ward. Ward, oh my god. If that is in fact your real name. <laughs> um... Come on, Liz, you know, it's really me. Baxter wouldn't do that. And how do I know that? I can't take you on your word. That's exactly what he would say about himself. I don't know how else to prove to you that I'm me, Liz. I do. What powder was on my favorite, most special summer dress when we were kids? Sunflowers. There you have it. Proven. You're real. She sighed, and you could hear the muffled sound of her hair brushing against the phone. I should incorporate sunflowers into my look again. That dress was so cute. Moving on, I'm glad you got there safe and sound, even though, uh, safe and sound enough that you're keeping up with me. I still don't know about that Baxter guy. He seems, or he's too formal and stiff for someone younger than me, <laughs> but I guess he got you there in one piece. How's the lodge? Sorry if you guys can hear my dog barking. It's pretty incredible. I had no idea they even had hotels like this. There was one huge chandelier in the giant lobby, impressive doors, and... Gee, sound ritzy. What kind of mountain lodge has a chandelier? This kind. At least you're getting put up somewhere nice. Do you, they give out sparkling water too? I don't know. Your older sister listened with the intensity of someone still handling an interrogation. <laughs> this will do. Just make sure to have some fun for the rest of us, alright? Take pictures. Mom's already starting asking why you haven't sent any. They want to see the inside of a car? That's what I said. The conversation trailed on longer, Liz weighing in on speakerphone with what had been going on at home since you'd left. She'd mentioned that Cove stopped by at some point to drop something off from his dad and told her to tell you that he said hi. Eventually, Liz tapered off and at the mention of her own sleepiness, she helpfully reminded you to go and get some rest before adding that you need to call her again tomorrow. The phone was promptly tossed aside in favor of preparing for the night. Then a gentle knock came at your door, Baxter presumably. Baxter correctly as he was the only person standing there in the doorway once you opened it. Hi, come in. Bowing his head as he stepped inside, he offered a thanks for being quick with the invitation instead of making him stand in the hallway. You came right in on time, I just wrapped up with Liz. How lovely, I'm sure that she was relieved to have heard from you alive and well. The curved Baxter smile widened while he took a quick look around your room. It couldn't be all that different from his own, but he regarded it as though it were. It appears that you've settled in quite nicely. It's late, so I won't keep you, but I did want to discuss our plans for tomorrow. Feel free to enjoy yourself in the morning without worrying about co accommodating me. It should be easy to explore the town if you want, but the lodge has anemones. You could also try if you're interested. There is a gym around, I believe, with a along with a pool and a complimentary breakfast if you're up early enough for it. As for the afternoon, evening, and night, I'd be pleased if we could spend it together. Baxter's lips pressed together into a line as he looked away. Lids falling with a short 
with a short of shame. He spoke out of the corner of his mouth after clearing his throat. My appearance requires some strict maintenance, and I take some time to get ready in the mornings. I can't force you to wait for me. It was understandable, so you nod along in agreement. It wasn't ever fun to be the person holding things up. And even though you came together, Baxter still might have need, needed some time to himself. You didn't always have to be in the same room. He nervously ran a hand through his hair before a semblance of, of his Baxter ward patent and confidence returned to his features. I thank you for your understanding. As for what we'll do tomorrow, how would you feel about a hike? There's a lovely trail that starts directly from here. It loops up and around the forest at the back and then returns us to where we started. It's a bit of a longer path, so we could pack a lunch with us to take on the way. I can have it ordered and delivered ahead of time. Um. Um. You didn't mind the suggestion. You were, you were already out here after all. Let's do it. He smiled graciously. Baxter had his heart set on the outing clearly. You'd made his day by joining Goodbye the adventure. Oh. Wait. Goodbye for today. There. <laughs> I'll look forward to it then. With that, Baxter took his leave after offering a quiet good night. There were a few hours left before you had to be in bed, so you settled in for the first night of what continued to be a surreal experience. It was spent peacefully, and then you were drifting into an equally gentle dream. I'm just gonna run.